system. Um, first of all, a formal welcome to all the delegates from uh, almost 50 countries around the world who are assembled here in Chile. Uh, thanks uh, to the massive efforts undertaken by ATTACH, uh, the team based in Chile, and uh, the Telecenter.org Foundation team based in Manila, uh, this is possible. So my special word of thanks to uh, the people behind uh, this show, particularly Angelica Rojas, uh, Angelica Celadon, uh, Tess Kamba, uh, uh, Bunafe Abdan, and uh, Anthony David. <clears throat> I think I would like to begin uh, this uh, uh, short intervention by thanking four people. Uh, first uh, and foremost, Richard Fuchs for uh, uh, accepting my uh, suggestion to have this meeting in Chile, and Richard was very uh, appreciative of this uh, idea. The first meeting happened in uh, um, Tunis in Africa, the second happened in Asia in Kuala Lumpur, and it was uh, quite appropriate for us to have the third meeting in Latin America, and uh, Chile was so chosen as a, as a venue, and Rich was uh, quite uh, supportive of this uh, idea. Uh, equally so, I think uh, Makeka, the Angelica Celadon, we call her Makeka, uh, was uh, very receptive to the idea of uh, uh, moving this meeting to Chile, so I want to thank her as well. Akhtar Bhatsha, the senior director of Microsoft, uh, uh, came forward uh, with immediate funding possibilities, uh, which also uh, uh, ensured that the meeting was going to happen in Chile, so uh, thanks especially to Akhtar. And finally, to Florencia Savellas, uh, uh, the senior uh, program specialist at uh, telecenter.org, but uh, the man who enabled telecenter.org to come to this level of uh, 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 global attention, uh, he has served, the chair, served as the chair of the program committee, so I'd like to thank him as well. So it's my tradition usually to uh, seize the opportunity at the inaugural session to thank uh, the people behind the show, so forgive me for taking some two, three minutes of your time. Now, the theme of the meeting, and uh, I should thank again Florencio for helping me to shape up the theme of this uh, meeting, uh, which is uh, uh, employability, productivity, empowerment at the grassroots. Uh, he was the first to appreciate uh, the thought process. Uh, in fact, uh, he helped to shape up the uh, entire theme. But uh, having said that, uh, I owe a lot to the uh, participants here because uh, this topic involves uh, at least four words, right? Employability, productivity, empowerment, grassroots. And all these four words would need to be understood uh, in the current context. It's uh, extremely important if uh, we have a theme for a, a, a global forum, uh, we uh, uh, understand uh, the current context in which uh, the world operates today. So what is the grassroots? Let me take the last word first. Uh, what is the grassroots? Now, different people would call uh, grassroots different things. Uh, initially, grassroots was an idea promoted in the United States uh, from a political perspective, grassroots party, what they called. It's the reflection of the soil. It uh, grows from the soil. You know, that's the kind of connotation uh, grassroots uh, was given. But in today's context, uh, uh, we hear a lot of things, base of the pyramid. Uh, C.K. Prahala, uh, who is no longer with us, uh, uh, he coined the term the bottom of the pyramid, uh, which uh, resonated uh, to some extent uh, the idea of the grassroots. The IT sector started calling the grassroots uh, as the emerging market. Uh, uh, you know, until recently, the grassroots were not seen to be the market for uh, many uh, companies. But now there is a new connotation of emerging markets. Uh, Manuel Castells, in his uh, trilogy of the Information Society, he understood uh, the grassroots uh, in the classification that he had in mind, the four worlds. Uh, and uh, interestingly, the fourth world was uh, a kind of a notorious world, which also formed part of the grassroots. Uh, DFID, the Department of International Development, uh, uh, in the context of uh, actually uh, nagging the Indian leadership, uh, came up with a report called uh, The Four Indias. And I would like to borrow from uh, this idea of four Indias uh, at the global context. I believe that there are uh, four worlds in every country. There is uh, a developed world within a particular country. There is a developing world within a particular country. 
a group of people who are aspiring to uh, become rich and uh, uh, grow up the uh, ladder of uh, what they call the middle income to high middle income group. There is also a group called the poor world. The uh, people who are uh, the statistics for the MDG goals and uh, MDG attention. The poverty alleviation agenda is actually uh, driven by the fact that there is also a poor world within every nation. And finally, there is also a missing world. They are not even statistics. They are forgotten. They are people who live uh, in uh, uh, abject poverty. If you uh, uh, get out of the uh, airport in Cape Town, uh, uh, travel towards the mountainous region, uh, you would find the contrast. On one hand, uh, at the left-hand side, you would find people living in polythene bags. On the other hand, uh, palatial homes. So you have uh, also this missing world within every society. So how do we define the grassroots? Is it uh, any longer the soil, the grown from the soil idea? The uh, Reshaping Geographies is the title of the uh, World Development Report 2009, which actually for the first time recognized that the grassroots is actually moving. Grassroots is no longer static. It's no longer confined to the soil. It's a, it's a movement. And we believe that uh, uh, every seventh person in this planet is a migrant. Every seventh person, that, uh, that equals one billion people who don't uh, live in the same place. And it's understood to be good. Now today in the current context, uh, uh, one billion people live in uh, remote and lagging areas. One billion people live in uh, world cities in slums, not in uh, uh, good uh, uh, homes, but in slums. And one billion people who are supposedly poor. That's uh, where the Millennium Development Goals are aiming to address, right? So the three billion people are uh, uh, in question today. And uh, how do we understand the grassroots is equally in question. So in the context of the next three days, uh, we would like to have uh, in, uh, at the back of our mind that the grassroots is moving. Grassroots is uh, actually not static. Uh, 35 million people in the United States uh, change residence every year. They don't live in the same residence uh, as they used to. And in fact, 8, 8 million people change their states. And uh, you can see the correlation between movement and uh, the prosperity. Melville Dewey, who classified knowledge uh, in, in the early 19th century, actually put, you know, many of you who had been to libraries would understand that uh, uh, the, the books are classified under some number. So 380 is uh, an interesting number in, the, in, in libraries. It's the number given for communication, for trade, for uh, uh, transport, for roads. So you can see the, the correlation between movement, the roads, transport, communication, and uh, trade. 35% of uh, the people, uh, actually the economies uh, within the Western Europe uh, trade among the neighbors. So the mantra today is uh, uh, no longer the status quo of the son of the soil or uh, the uh, grown from the soil idea of the grassroots. It's all about uh, uh, higher density population. People, people are moving to cities. It's all about uh, shorter distances. And it's also equally about fewer divisions. 3% of Africans uh, actually move out of their uh, country, and uh, it's detrimental. Today's uh, research actually uh, reveals that uh, one of the reasons uh, Africa is not progressing is uh, because of the restrictions of, uh, to the flow of ideas, flow of skills, flow of people, flow of goods and services. So I thank, uh, I think, the United Nations Development Program and the World Development Program, interestingly, on, in the same year, in 2009, uh, took up this topic of migration and uh, the geographies that are uh, actually uh, 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 seen in a new context. So grassroots is moving. Grassroots is all about uh, uh, different worlds within a particular society. Grassroots is all about uh, not just uh, uh, understanding these people as emerging markets, but these people as uh, important elements uh, in the part and parcel of uh, the society because uh, uh, we off late recognize migration to be something useful. Now the second term, empowerment. Empowerment is uh, understood uh, again in uh, different ways by different people, but I think the underlying principle is uh, all about uh, 
the confidence in uh, uh, people's abilities. So how do you empower somebody to gain confidence in one, one's own ability to realize and uh, uh, realize one's own right, one's own uh, uh, existence, one's own capabilities, one's own uh, uh, ability to contribute. That's all about empowerment. And uh, since Beijing, we know that uh, among uh, all the marginalized communities, uh, uh, gender and uh, women's empowerment has become the mainstay. So it's important to recognize that uh, uh, empowerment is uh, uh, all about uh, enabling people to recognize their own uh, capabilities. And Amartya Sen very interestingly uh, comes up with what uh, he calls the Senian idea of how to measure capabilities, how to uh, measure happiness. And he talks about the freedom of choice, uh, uh, freedom of uh, uh, ability to choose, uh, but more so uh, multiple aspects to understand empowerment. So again, in the context of uh, this meeting, we need to underline this uh, factor, empowerment, in the right perspective. It's not enough to have uh, X number of women uh, up in the ladder with skills. Uh, it's uh, more about uh, giving the uh, multiple opportunities uh, and uh, the concern for uh, actually the distribution of opportunities uh, within the society. Productivity, the third, uh, third word. It's usually understood uh, in the economic context uh, as a measure of uh, output vis-a-vis uh, -vis the measure of input. Output is usually in the course of pr products and services. Input is uh, usually in the form of labor. And uh, now the new mantra of productivity is uh, more about efficiency, more about uh, uh, not so much about just profitability, but uh, how you enhance productivity so that you can distribute uh, uh, the economic growth. So if you read uh, many national government uh, agenda around the world, it's all about inclusive growth, uh, uh, productivity by not just the 90% the of the population that would live in a particular city, uh, such as the case in Dhaka in Bangladesh, but it's all about uh, uh, the majority population able to be productive and uh, the conducive opportunity created for them to be productive, not just uh, uh, by long working hours, but uh, through efficiency and efficient uh, working uh, environment and opportunities for them. Now the last word, employment. It's uh, interesting that employment uh, equals decent work, but uh, employment is not a word uh, uh, at least uh, uh, recognized among 70% of the world population because uh, they are all occupied in uh, one, one occupation or other. They are not in uh, uh, in income-based security employment. Uh, uh, many economies, uh, including the one that I come from, India, uh, depends on uh, non-formal and informal uh, sector, which uh, doesn't, de doesn't uh, really talk about the decent work, uh, which is the uh, uh, almost the synonym for employment today. Now, uh, Professor Swaminathan, who is, uh, who's been associated with uh, the Telecenter movement, who is uh, uh, applauded as the father of the Green Revolution in India following the Brazilian model, oftentimes quotes, employability is uh, not possible for uh, uh, state, for the state, for the governments, uh, because uh, of an uh, umpteen uh, range of issues, uh, the low um, uh, infrastructure, the low skills uh, prevailing among communities, uh, and uh, also the inability to actually bring uh, a majority of people into the formal labor force. So he talks about this idea of uh, um, converting the unskilled laborers into skilled laborers, converting the unskilled uh, occupation where uh, people spend long working hours producing very little to more skilled manpower that uh, enables them to be productive. So now today, in the current context, you see the national skills development agenda in very many countries. In Malaysia, for example, the 40% bottom household is uh, a focus. Uh, the rural employment guarantee schemes in uh, some of the welfare states uh, that are moving towards welfare state regime is another example as to how people are looking at short-term interventions to convert uh, unskilled manpower into skilled manpower. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this context of uh, the four key words, uh, in whatever way we, we understand, I think uh, there is an important uh, opportunity for us. 
if the first uh, telecenter forum in uh, Tunisia defined the present, the present status of telecenters uh, by uh, actually proposing what we call the telecenter ecosystem. The second uh, telecenter forum in Kuala Lumpur uh, looked at transition from a, a grant making program housed within IDRC to more of an independent uh, organization that would uh, move and uh, shake the world. Now the third telecenter forum here today and the next two days is uh, the opportunity for the future. And I believe that uh, uh, this uh, underlining theme, employability, productivity, empowerment at the grassroots, understood in the right context, uh, would enable you to position telecenters as tools in uh, increasing employment, enhancing productivity, supporting the empowerment agenda of the grassroots that's moving. Thank you very much.